Before we begin, there will be spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc of Bleach in the video to come. Despite the flaws surrounding the rushed ending of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, the war between Shinigami and Quincy comes to a suitably epic climax when Ichigo, Renji, and later Uryu team up with Aizen to do battle with the Soul King usurper Yuhabak, who is now overflowing with a sinister power and ready to completely annihilate the Soul Society. And as Yuhabak puts his plan into action and begins collapsing the very world around them, it's up to Ichigo and his unlikely ally to stop the Quincy King once and for all. The very final battle of Bleach is criminally, brutally short, but awesome all the same, featuring an all-out clash of some of the greatest powers the series has ever seen. And yet, at the same time, questions have swirled continuously around this fight since we first saw it come to life, specifically in regards to how it plays out and what's actually going down on the page. This is exclusively due to Aizen's involvement in the battle and his intricate and heavy usage of Kyoka Suigetsu that unfolds right before our eyes, draping the duel in a curtain of illusion that that makes it difficult to ascertain what's truly happening. The final battle, specifically chapter 683, The Dark Side of Two World Ends, is quite unique, I think, in that it's really being told from Yuhabak's perspective. We, as readers, are none the wiser to what's happening behind the scenes going into this fight, to what Aizen's scheme is and how he's planning on getting won over this all-seeing god. All we see is Yuhabak constantly fending off assaults from all sides as Ichigo, Renji, and Aizen try to attack him. And so we see this fight as Yuhabak himself sees it. We are privy to no additional information, unaware of the machinations at play until it's too late. Because of this, it can be difficult to know when certain characters are involved in the battle and when they aren't. Kubo drops several hints throughout the action as to which fighters are where at any given point, and in this video I want to give my interpretation of the final battle as it currently stands. Now this is just my interpretation based on what I've seen from the source material itself. I can't and won't claim it to be the exact truth, and as always I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments. Did I miss anything, and how accurate do you think my interpretation of the final clash really is? I've wanted to do a video on the final battle for a while now, and I hope that most of what I say makes some kind of sense. And so, without further ado, let's take a look at the last battle of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and of Bleach itself. So, before we get into my interpretation, let's take a quick look at the fight itself and how it unfolds in the source material as we see it. This isn't going to be a full-on battle analysis video, instead we're only really going to be taking a look at the very end of chapter 682 and the entirety of chapter 683, or the period of the battle under the influence of Aizen's hypnotic spell. Alright, so the situation in Varvelt is dire. Although the Schutzstoffel have all been defeated, Yuhabak himself is stronger than ever, having used the Alsvalen to strip Hashwolf and Gerard of their powers. With the power of the Almighty allowing Yuhabak to not only see every single possible future, but alter them as well, it seems like the Quincy King has become unstoppable. Leaving the defeated Ichigo behind and opening a portal, Yuhabak returns to the Seireite to begin the destruction of all three worlds, collapsing them into their original primordial state. However, upon arriving in the Seireite, Yuhabak is confronted by none other than Sosuke Aizen, still bound to his chair. For whatever reason, Yuhabak decides to attack Aizen with a colossal wave of black energy that tears into the sky above. Although Aizen is completely unharmed, Chair Summer is obliterated in the blast, finally freeing the traitorous Shinigami from his confinement, while giving us a good look at how strong Yuhabak has actually become since Aizen's own fully powered Hado 9 left no scratch 
on the chair itself. Again, why Yuhabak didn't just leave Aizen where he was and go about his plan, I'm not sure. Perhaps he thought Aizen had enough power even while bound to pose a threat, so he simply tried to kill him instead. Either that or Yuhabak just relished the challenge of someone who might be able to stand up to him, hence the Quincy King's massive grin upon seeing Aizen. Meanwhile, we return to our despondent heroes as Ichigo is revitalized thanks to the shocking reappearance of Tsukishima and Ginjo, who help restore Ichigo's broken Bankai to its original state. Ichigo and Renji then leave the others behind, making their way through the portal and giving chase, hoping to catch up to Yuhabak before he can destroy the world. While I like the fact that Renji goes with Ichigo, I've always kind of wished that Rukia was there as well, since it began with Ichigo and Rukia however many chapters ago, and I wish it could have ended with them as well, especially since Urahara's cryptic last words before he collapsed in chapter 666, the last time we ever saw him in the source material, specifically a alluded to both Ichigo and Rukia and him leaving it up to them, so I do kind of wish she'd been involved, but maybe in the anime. Back in the Seireite, with Aizen now standing tall, he challenges Yuhabak, unleashing a crushing stampede of Reiatsu. Unfazed, Yuhabak wonders why Aizen would fight him, only for Ichigo and Renji to suddenly appear, leaping into the frame behind the Quincy King, their swords raised. Ichigo brings his blade down with a powerful swing, but Yuhabak counters him, sending both Ichigo and Renji skidding backwards. Yuhabak notes that he foresaw their arrival, as well as the restoration of Ichigo's Bankai, before revealing that Tensa Zangetsu would, however, be broken once more. As he says this, a giant split appears in Ichigo's Bankai, cracking the white outer shell, but the sword itself remains intact. Confused, Yuhabak prepares to fight anyway, lifting his hand as it is coated in a fiery power. The final battle is now truly about to begin. Yuhabak unleashes another calamitous wave of energy towards Ichigo with enough power to rend the Sokyoku Hill apart, splitting the massive mountain in two and decimating the Sokyoku scaffold. Already, the Soul Society is being torn to pieces. We saw from the end of Lille's fight that there are still many officers here in these streets, and I can only wonder what they're thinking at this point, likely trying to steer well clear of this incredible battle now taking place seemingly out of nowhere. Despite the immense power of the attack, however, Ichigo survives, though the battle does seem to be taking its toll as he finds himself exhausted. Suddenly, from within the darkness left over on the ground by Yuhabak's seeping power, Zabimaru tears forth and flies towards the Quincy King as Renji tries to catch him off guard. The moment Yuhabak notices him, Renji activates Bankai and leaps into the air, but to no avail. Without so much as moving an inch, Yuhabak rips Renji's arm right off, noting that although he has crushed every single Bankai in the future, he will personally deal with Ichigo and Renji so they understand his strength. In a flash, however, Aizen appears between Yuhabak and Renji, landing on the ground and activating Hado 99, Goryu Tenmetsu, which conjures a pair of titanic dragons made of flaming purple Rayatsu which loom over the battlefield as the ground beneath their feet is torn asunder, streaks of purple light bursting forth from the cracks in the earth. Aizen then lunges for Yuhabak, but the Quincy King reveals Aizen's Kyokusuigetsu has been destroyed too, as Aizen is shocked to see his blade has a crack in it. Yuhabak then slams his hand into Aizen's stomach, sending the former captain flying away in a shower of blood. As Yuhabak watches Aizen fall far to the ground below, a desperate Ichigo attempts to jump him from behind. Ichigo, however, is missing an arm, and we can see remnants of Renji Sōō Zabimaru crumbling away from him, implying that the Renji we initially saw in the fight was actually Ichigo all along. Yuhabak stops Ichigo's Bankai with his bare hand and shatters it completely, revealing he knows what's been going on this whole time. Aizen used his power of complete hypnosis to swap Ichigo and Renji's positions. Yuhabak believes it was Renji who was sent flying by the blast of power at the start of the fight that destroyed the Sokyoku Hill, and that it was Ichigo whose arm Yuhabak tore off. 
not Renji's. Claiming to be able to see all, even through Aizen's illusions, Yuhabak then punches a massive, gaping hole through Ichigo's chest, and we watch as the hero's body hangs limply upon Yuhabak's outstretched arm, the Seireite being swallowed up by the Quincy King's power as the entire Senzai Q is reduced to rubble in the background. But then suddenly, the truth is revealed. In an amazing moment, we discover that it isn't Ichigo that Yuhabak has impaled, but Aizen, who reveals his Kyokusui Getsu does in fact work on their all-seeing enemy. He might be all-seeing, but it doesn't really matter when he's only seeing what Aizen wants him to see. Horrified, Yuhabak can do nothing to prevent the real Ichigo from stabbing him through the back before activating a point-blank Getsuga Tensho that tears Yuhabak in two, seemingly killing him in an awesome double-page spread demonstrating Ichigo's raw, divine power. As chapter 684 begins, Aizen commends Ichigo for reacting so quickly to the power of his Kyokusui Getsu, and Ichigo notes that on his way to the battleground he felt the same same sensation that washed over everyone when Aizen ensnared the Gote 13 and his power back in the fake Karakura Town showdown. So he knew that Aizen's power was in effect before he actually arrived. Aizen reveals that he released his Zanpakuto before Ichigo turned up, knowing that Ichigo wouldn't be affected by its power while hoping that Yuhabak would. So that's the first half of the final battle laid bare, but what's actually going on here? Is Ichigo actually involved in this fight from the start? Did Renji lose his arm at the beginning of the battle or not? Was Yuhabak able to see through any of Aizen's spell at all? Well, I think I have an answer that I'm fairly satisfied with based on my own readings of the original chapters, and I'd like to run through it now. This is what I think is truly going on during the final battle piece by piece, but as I said, let me know your thoughts in the comments and if I'm off base at all. So the battle begins with Yuhabak freeing Aizen from his chair with a huge wave of power. There's no reason to suspect anything untoward is currently going on here, but we can assume that Aizen can already sense Ichigo and Renji making their way to the Soul Society as can Yuhabak, and so the stage needs to be set. That being said, it's entirely possible this version of Aizen right now is an illusion, but for simplicity's sake we will get to that idea later on when I have a few questions left over about the fight. So, Aizen challenges the Quincy King to battle, and as chapter 682 ends, Ichigo and Renji burst onto the scene and attempt to land a massive hit on their enemy, only to be countered. And here we have our first point of note. Ichigo and Renji are not actually here. These are illusions conjured by Aizen, the first of many created to deceive Yuhabak. Like I said, Aizen sensed their impending arrival and so used his Zanpakuto to set the scene, to make Yuhabak believe they had already arrived. And so, right away, the fight is already skewed. The battle is still just Aizen versus Yuhabak, but the Quincy King doesn't know that. Yuhabak then tries to break what he believes to be Ichigo's Bankai once again, but it fails. While I'm not completely certain as to why this is, and again we'll talk about this in more detail a bit later on, I'm assuming it is just because this Ichigo isn't real, and therefore Aizen can manipulate the illusion however he wants, choosing to show Yuhabak's powers as not totally working. Either that, or Yuhabak can't break Ichigo's Bankai properly, because that's not what he's actually breaking. But we'll get into that again, like I said, a little bit later, as it does get a bit messy, and I have a theory that this may actually be Aizen, and the entire start of this fight might not be real at all. But again, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to stay the course for now. Anyway, up next we see Yuhabak launch an enormous blast at the fake Ichigo. This Ichigo, I'm pretty confident, is nothing. He is just an illusion. Meanwhile, the fake Renji launches himself at Yuhabak, activating Bankai only to have his arm ripped off. And here's where things start to get multi-layered. 
This is actually the true version of Aizen, who has disguised himself as Renji, presumably to take Yuhabark's gaze away from the version of Aizen that will appear in a second. The key to knowing the true sequence of events is to look at the wounds present on the true version of these characters once Aizen's complete hypnosis is lifted. Pay attention here to the false Renji's injuries. A character missing their left arm is one of the few constants in this battle, and as the real Aizen is missing his left arm when he's revealed later on, with there being no record of him losing an arm in this fight until that moment, we can assume this fake Renji is actually Aizen himself. After this, Aizen conjures a fake version of himself to then do battle up close and personal with Yuhabak, while the real Aizen must presumably back off and recuperate. This fake version of Aizen not only has both arms, but also wields the actual physical blade of Kyokusui Getsu, something the true version of Aizen never does. In fact, the true version of Aizen never once actually battles Yuhabak himself, outside of possibly the moment he stands up from his ruined chair, but like I said, even that may not actually be him. For the rest of the fight, the real Aizen is disguised at all times, and that makes sense, as he doesn't want to be the main focus here, as he's trying to keep this whole thing running by himself. So, the real Aizen has had his arm torn off by Yuhabak, but he's now able to escape and take on a different form as Yuhabak battles the fake Aizen instead. The fake Aizen activates Hado 99 and tries to attack Yuhabak, but his sword is splintered by the Quincy King's power before he's sent flying backwards to his apparent defeat. Now, here's another part that I find a little weird, and I want to return to an earlier point I made. Is it just me, or is the way the fake Aizen's Kyokusui Getsu is broken virtually identical to the way the fake Ichigo's Bankai is broken at the start of the fight? This does make me wonder if I'm missing something here, and I would love your insight. It's possible Aizen, the real Aizen, is disguised as this Ichigo at the start of the battle, and the damage to the fake Tensor Zangetsu actually happened to Kyokusui Getsu, but then I'm not sure how that works regarding the real Aizen who never uses the blade itself. Another option is that Yuhabak is freshly breaking this fake Kyokusui Getsu here, and for some reason it just looks similar to the damage the fake Tensor Zangetsu received earlier, though of course a very simple solution to that is that Yuhabak is, for whatever reason, unable to break the swords of these illusions. So if that Ichigo at the start is totally fake, his Bankai only splinters, and if this version of Aizen is totally fake, his Zanpak To only splinters as well. In actuality, this last idea is probably my favourite and the one I am leaning towards currently, there's not necessarily any logic behind it, but their swords not quite breaking properly is Kubo's way of perhaps hinting that they are not the real deal. Anyway, thinking he's defeated Aizen, Yuhabak turns to catch Ichigo in mid-air, the boy attempting to strike him from behind. This image of Ichigo is perhaps the most interesting in the fight, as it tells us a lot about the tricks that Kubo is trying to play here. First of all, Ichigo is missing his left arm, but not only that, we can actually see fragments of Renji's Bankai disappearing from Ichigo's body in real time, including his ornate shoulder shoulder pads, and saw Zabimaru's skeletal sash. As readers, we are supposed to think the same thing as Yuhabak here, that Renji was actually Ichigo all along, disguised by Aizen's power. But again, that's not accurate. This Ichigo here, leaping towards Yuhabak, is also the true Aizen, who backed off after his arm was torn off when disguised as Renji. The fact that you can still see some of Renji's old outfit, some of his old Bankai on this Ichigo, just demonstrates how fast this fight is actually moving, and that Aizen has barely had time to create this new illusion. But of course, we see this all play out and come to a head when this Ichigo is indeed revealed to be Aizen when the real Ichigo finally arrives and successfully injures Yuhabak. It is pretty convoluted, but to really try and break it down, Kubo is trying to do something really cool here, I think. The key thing to remember is that Ichigo and Renji do not arrive until Ichigo stabs Yuhabak in the back. For the remainder of the fight prior to that, it is just Aizen battling Yuhabak alone, but he uses his Kyokusui Getsu to conjure up not only fake versions of Ichigo and Renji, 
but also a fake version of himself as well. Aizen initially takes the form of Renji, but has his arm removed instantly. Later, he returns as Ichigo while his doppelganger distracts Yuhabak, and we see the remnants of his Renji disguise leaving his body. When the truth is revealed, Aizen is missing his left arm, while of course Ichigo still has both of his. Aizen must have sensed their arrival and used that to concoct his lie, manipulating this entire fight on his own, while simultaneously Ichigo sensed Kyokusui Getsu being used, and upon his arrival could see the battlefield for what it really was. Yuhabak holding the seriously injured eyes in a loft, but talking to him as though he was Ichigo. While a bit confusing, it's definitely one of the best, purest examples of Kyokusui Getsu being used in the series, and really gives Aizen a wonderful last hurrah. It is very impressive to think of the entire battle as being coordinated by Aizen alone, as he controls three different forms at once to get the better of Yuhabak. Interestingly, when Yuhabak thinks he's speaking to the real Ichigo, he notes that he sees what is really going on, as he, as I mentioned earlier, believes Ichigo and Renji had swapped places at the start of the fight. This is actually intriguing to me. Although he is wrong, it's an admission by Yuhabak that Kyokusui Getsu must work on him to some degree, as although he thinks he can see through the illusion, he's noting that what he was seeing initially wasn't accurate. But that is pretty much it. The final battle of Bleach hopefully made a little clearer. I apologise if not. That being said, even after going through it like this, I do still have some lingering questions. First and foremost, the biggest question on my mind is undoubtedly Renji himself. As you can see from my breakdown, there is no place for him here at all. So where does he fit into the fight? Renji arrives alongside Ichigo, but I'm fairly sure neither of them are real. Then Renji attempts to use Bankai against Yuhabak, only to have his arm torn off, but this must be the true Aizen in disguise based on his wounds as we see later. So is Renji even here at all? When the true Ichigo arrives on the battlefield much later, Renji is nowhere to be seen whatsoever. We see the real Ichigo and Renji making their way to the battleground, but then as far as I can tell, the real Renji never actually gets involved. Is it possible that Ichigo told him to remain behind as they arrived at the Seireite? That seems unlikely to me since Renji quite literally just gave Ichigo an emotional talking to about how he'll always have his back, but then I really have no idea what is going on with him if not. The only other thing that is possible is that Renji and Aizen swapped places, and that the so-called fake Aizen, as I have dubbed, is actually Renji, and he is defeated when Yuhabak slams his hand into his stomach, sending him flying. This would mean that at the start of the fight, it is Renji who jumps in to protect Aizen after Aizen's arm is torn off, and that would make sense from a character perspective. Yuhabak even mocks Aizen for coming to the aid of those he deems to be lesser beings, but if it was Renji jumping into Aizen's defence, I could probably believe it even if you wouldn't like it very much. There is one issue with this, however. This would imply that Ichigo and Renji arrive before the effects of Kyokusui Getsu are lifted, and I'm not sure how well Renji would be able to adapt considering he too would be under Kyokusui Getsu's spell at the time, and would therefore be witnessing the fight in the same way as Yuhabak. And then the other question I have pertains to the broken swords in this fight. It feels like too much of a coincidence that both Tensor Zangetsu and Kyokusui Getsu would be fractured in the exact same way which does make me wonder if the fake Ichigo at the start is actually Aizen. And that is completely possible, to be fair, because that would then mean the Aizen who is freed from his bonds and walks towards Yuhabak isn't Aizen at all, but an illusion. So, truthfully, after all of that discussion, I'm not sure I'm any closer to a solid rundown of the fight itself than I was at the start. That being said, I like the idea, actually, of the first Aizen being an illusion and the real Aizen actually pretending to be Ichigo, which is why his sword doesn't properly break. But that being said, I think it is a lot simpler and makes just as much sense, if not more, 
that the swords not properly breaking is just Kubo's way of hinting that these are not real versions of these characters, as we see with the fake Ichigo and then the fake Aizen. So I am then still in the camp that Aizen creates a fake version of himself to duel Yuhabak up close, rather than it secretly being Renji. Because if Ichigo and Renji had arrived before Aizen released the effects of his Zanpak toe, then Renji would be under its spell and seeing the fight the same way Yuhabak is. Maybe he would be able to adapt to seeing another version of himself in battle quick enough, but it is so hard to say. Briefly though, to wrap things up, this is what I think happens as we come to the end of the video. Yuhabak frees Aizen from his chair, but the Aizen that challenges Yuhabak may or may not be an illusion. It ultimately doesn't really matter that much. Then, either the real Aizen disguised as Ichigo or just a totally fake Ichigo, again, it doesn't really matter that much. All you get out of this is that his Bankai can't be broken, attacks Yuhabak. Then, the real Aizen, now disguised as Renji, uses Bankai against Yuhabak, but Yuhabak rips off his arm. Aizen then conjures a fake version of himself Himself to battle Yuhabak with both arms intact and his blade, but Yuhabak sends it flying away in a spray of blood. The real Aizen returns once again, still missing his arm, but now disguised, this time as Ichigo. Yuhabak thinks that Ichigo and Renji are actually there, but had swapped places at the start of the fight thanks to Aizen's power. However, Ichigo and Renji were never there until this very moment when Aizen reveals himself to have been both Renji and Ichigo all along, and we can tell this thanks to his wounds. The real Ichigo then arrives and stabs Yuhabak in the back, unleashing an almighty Getsuga to seemingly end the fight. Those are my thoughts in a nutshell, but do please let me know in the comments how you're feeling about them and the fight in general. I'd love to know. Maybe our theories are the same, maybe we are differing in some areas. Either way, it's a fun fight and makes for an interesting, if tricky, discussion. That's it for the video, guys. As always, I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts again down in the comments below. How do you feel about this fight? Of course, this is only the first half of the final battle, but it's really the only half that's actually relevant to this discussion. But I'd love to get all of your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. As always, I want to end the video by saying a massive thank you and giving a huge shout out to my supporters over on Patreon. I really do appreciate each and every one of you so, so very much. If you like what I do here over on YouTube and you want to help support me that step further, you too can support me over on Patreon to get your name in the credits just like this and to get every single video I release absolutely ad-free. Alright guys, but until next time, I'll catch you later and I'll see you then.